Yep, we are back. You guys saw us. We worked late last night, but we are back. We've got another addition, and he's back. We got Jack Pazinski back over there working on plumbing. He's gonna get that done, get all the, the pump hooked up, get everything inside the vault, ready to roll. We are gonna build a pondless waterfall. The easiest way to learn something is to teach it. We are rocking and rolling on this pond. We appreciate you guys tuning in. He and Chris Z are gonna finish up getting all this stuff done. How you doing under there, bud? Hey, what's up? <laughs> so you got Chris over here trenching for the plumbing as well as our four inch drain tile, which you see those three pieces right there that's gonna tie in to a first flush. Then we'll be harvesting the rainwater from that downspout right there off of the corner of the house. And we're gonna use that as mother nature's autofill out here. We've got an SLD five to nine pump. Jack, why don't you tell them about the SLD five to nine pump? I will. What's up guys? So I'm just gonna do a quick rundown of what I have over here. So let me flip you guys around. So right now, um, this is our SLD 5 to 9 pump. So what that means is that it's an adjustable pump that goes from 5,000 to 9,000 gallons per hour. And so well, this receiver here helps us or adjust the flow in the pump. So as you can tell, there's this plus minus sign. So the plus will increase the flow of the pump and the minus sign will decrease the flow of the pumps. And then this power button uh, turns it on and off. It helps us adjust the flow so that way we get our water flows exactly where we want them. Or if we have multiple things going, we can kind of adjust everything as we need. So I'm going to give you guys a quick rundown once I get everything ready and we will show you. So our way of hooking up this plumbing line is that we'll take our 90, which is I have right here. We will measure from the bottom of our vault, which is all the way down there to we'll mock up our 90, which is right here. And so we will mark right to the edge of my finger, right to the edge, which is 42 and a half, which I measured. So then I will dry fit this PVC pipe into our MPT fitting, screw that into our pump and then mock up where 42 and a half lines up. Or when everything's mocked up, everything will come out right to this opening down here. So the good thing about these plastic vaults is that we can form them to wherever we need them so instead of coming out this hole i drill the hole down here so that way that plumbing comes nice and low on top of the aqua blocks and then into our three inch line that's going to be going into this trench right now which is he is doing right now so i just got to glue everything up and then i got to attach our union that way it's nice and easy for a home replacement if we need to and we will get going i will show you guys the outlet. So I got everything glued up. So I have my stand pipe that's just down here that feeds my uh, pump. It comes up to a two inch 90 and then two inch union. So that way I can twist this off, which let me see if I can do with one hand. All I gotta do is just twist this off real quick and then pop this off and I can pull the pump out for easy service and maintenance instead of hard piping everything and then you have to cut everything out and then redo coupling. It's easier doing a union. That way we can twist it off pretty easily. So now I'm gonna come over here and in this case, we are gonna bulkhead through the liner. So I'm gonna put a bulkhead somewhere in this area here, attach this pipe to our MPT, which that'll accept another MPT on the outside of the bulkhead, which then will accept our two to three inch reducer that is going to be sitting outside the liner. So phase two of, every, of all the plumbing, I will show you guys once we get everything ready to go and staged. I just wanted to tell you guys beforehand. So stay tuned. <laughs> So we are rocking and rolling right along with this project. We can go ahead and break for lunch, but we've got our steps in, a lot of our retaining stones, edges are starting to get finished, and it looks so stinking awesome in through here with these aqua blues. I love the various edge treatments in through here. It looks incredible. We've got our first flush in. It's gonna harvest the rainwater from this downspout, and it will take it over and come in through the basin. You can see we've got our four inch drain tile and our three inch plumbing line ran through there. It's all trenched in through here, and it comes back in the reservoir here. Now we band clamped the four inch drain tile and then we ran a bulkhead fitting through the liner for our two inch line that goes down to our five to nine, which ends up increasing up in diameter to three inch right there at that fitting. So all that plumbing is gonna run up the side of the house and run up through our upper pooling area, feeding the sphere and the spillway starting off the main waterfalls. But we are rocking right along on this project. So it is moving, but it is lunchtime. So we gotta feed ourselves, get some energy for the rest of the day. So Z and I are over here on this side going up the hill. We are carving out all of our pulling areas. So right now we marked out our area. We do like to do half moons. That way it's easier to set our rocks. Um, it maximizes our efficiency when we're setting these big rocks. But as you guys can tell, this hillside is pretty big. I mean, it's a, probably a good eight to 10 foot grade change from where Z's at to where the machine's at. So it's gonna be some pretty nice waterfalls. This is gonna be like a two and a half foot waterfall. And then this is probably gonna be a two foot waterfall. And then we're gonna have our pulling area with our sphere and our spillway sitting up top. So I just wanna give you guys a quick rundown of what we are doing 
doing over here. Those guys over there are finishing up the basin area and we decided to come over here and jumpstart this area. That way we could all hammer out this area, throw in the fabric liner and fabric in and then all our rocks and edges. So stay tuned and we're gonna get after it. Hopefully Chrissy and I can uh, finish before they finish over there. <laughs> As you guys saw, Chris and Jack are over here digging out all of the terraces for the waterfalls back in here. For the main waterfalls, it's going to start up at the driveway with that sphere and cascade down into this stream area. One thing I wanted to point out real quick, and I think we've talked about it in other videos, but why not talk about it in this video as well? But I came over here and I look at the excavation. Everything looks great. They're digging exactly where we need to be, but the base of this area right here actually slopes forward like this, and it's about three inches high compared to the elevation of this stream coming in through here. So it was just an oversight and they were going to get to it. But what I wanted to point out is at the base of waterfalls, there's always a depression because that water is coming down and it will erode away all this stuff and there will be this pool area. So we never want to see that area sloping towards us and into the stream. If anything, we will back pitch it towards the base of this waterfalls. As that water comes down, it'll swell up and then work its way this way. Also, what will happen is if there's any pitch sloping this way towards us it will assist in washing all of that gravel out of that pocket area if anything a little depression down here at the base of the waterfalls back pits towards that wall right there so just some of those little techniques that we do a lot of people do but maybe don't always articulate and you might not know if you were just getting into this so I'm sure it makes sense to Jack and Chris up there anyways just some of those construction tips and tricks to help you guys be successful pond builders out there to be as awesome as we are okay Yep. As you can see, we got both of our shelves done. And the reason why we only went up two shelves instead of all the way up to the top is because our machine is sitting right where that pooling area is gonna be. And in order to set these stones down here, I mean, these stones are good. They're gonna be at least waist high. And with it being Saka Blues, they're gonna be some pretty heavy rocks. So we have to get that machine as close as possible. So we're able to get oh, these two pooling areas excavated. We'll be able to get the rock set. And then once we get the rock set in this pooling area too, uh, we'll be able to back the machine out and carve out our entire pooling area. Now, this one up here, probably that waterfall is gonna be somewhere around here. It kind of depends on rock wise. We might end up doing another small shelf and then a pooling area because we still have some playroom up top to put our sphere where the machine's at. So I just want to give you guys a quick overview of what it looks like after we get everything dug out and then before put the fabric and liner in. So Z is waiting patiently for me to stop filming so we can put the fabric in. So we are about the last hour of daylight out here and this looks absolutely sick. Like just, just so stupid awesome in through here. JD and Wander have finished up that dry creek bed. The basin's done uh, with the exception of this little bit of liner there. We're gonna gravel this stream, get our lights in. And Jack's over here thinking he can build a waterfall from up above, but I know he can't. But we got this all excavated out. Now we're gonna start building this main waterfall is coming down through here. The size of this boulder is about 42 
pieces and it has a saw cut on the bottom. You guys can see that. So I don't want to see that at all. So we're going to use it to our advantage and actually set that thing right on that flat bottom like it's intended to be set in there. Important to remember the height of these rocks too. You don't want to come in here and start stacking a bunch of rock if you don't have to. So that's a reason because this is about a three foot waterfall here. We wanted to come in with some of these larger frame rocks in through here instead of stacking boulder behind boulder behind boulder. Then we really start encroaching, which we may have to do at some point because right there, that's about four and a half feet from that shelf all the way up into there. But we haven't dug anything up there yet to go back that way because it'll cut off access for the machine. And we need all of that reach to get down in here. So we're gonna go ahead and set this waterfalls and then rock in this pooling area down and through here. Bada bing, bada boom. And then we are going to work our way up this hill. So let's go follow along. The blower's going, the lights are on. That means it's time to call it quits for the day. We made an incredible amount of progress today. It's still gonna be hard to see. We'll go back over it in the morning, but all of this is now finished. Grading is done. We have got ourselves into that waterfall area, which is where we wanted to be. So fingers crossed, we'll wrap up tomorrow. We've got a lot of work left ahead, but we, I think we got this. So we'll be back.